Now we're going to look at finding vector components. Now before you freak out because you don't know what that is, let me just start by first explaining something else. Let's first just look at a right angled triangle. So a right angled triangle has a hypotenuse, that's the slanted side. Then it has uh, two other sides that form a 90 degree angle. So here and here there's two sides and these two sides forms a 90 degree angle where they meet okay this is called a right angled triangle now in this right angled triangle let's call this the uh, this angle we'll call theta I'm going to keep it a bit technical now theta that's the opposite side so I'll call it O this is the adjacent side, so I'll call it A. And this um, slanted side is called the hypotenuse. Now, if you look at this, you can use trigonometry to find any side length if you have another side length and this angle. And I'm going to show you just a sneak trick, which I call um, ratio triangles. Okay. and that is that sine of theta so sine that is one of the trigonometric ratios sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse cos of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse cos of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse and finally tan of theta um, is another one I'm not going to look at tan because we're only going to use the these two for the purposes um, of this lesson so let me explain let's say I have the hypotenuse I know the length of the hypotenuse and I know the angle that this hypotenuse makes with the adjacent side so anything okay that can for example be 30 degrees and the hypotenuse is something like 2 centimeters okay if I know these two it means to find the opposite length this side length I place my hand over this and I see I have to multiply sine of the angle times the hypotenuse I have these two values so that the opposite is equal to the hypotenuse multiplied by sine of theta okay if I notice okay that I have the opposite side length Now, if I instead wanted the adjacent side length, I'll use cos. So closing adjacent, I see I have to multiply the hypotenuse with cos. Okay, so when they're next to each other, we multiply. So the adjacent side length is equal to the hypotenuse times cos of theta. Okay, now this is some background which you need to understand um, so if you didn't get this pause the video or rewind and go and look at this once again because it's very important for the next part because what is the components of a vector well a component vector component um, is actually two parts of that vector that when we add them together we get that vector so for example consider this vector let's say this is a vector from here to the end that's a vector that means if I take this vector and that vector and we add them together in other words put them head to tail when I add these two vectors together so now it's vector A and vector O now I get vector H so to break up a vector into two components that make a 90 degree angle I will use these formulas Okay, that to find this opposite component I will multiply with sine of the angle and to find the adjacent component I will multiply with cos of that angle so let me let me explain once again let's look at any vector 
there's a vector let's call it that okay and I say that vector um, can be uh, split into two components that make 90 degree angles with one another so for example this component and that component now again notice how when I add these two components they add up to this this vector so that's just going to be called my vector and this is going to be my um, vector let's call it component one and vector component two now very important these two components must make a 90 degree angle for me in, uh, to use the sine and cos so what I need now is this angle if I can get that angle I can find these two very easily uh, assuming that I know the length of the vector or the magnitude of the vector so how do I do that okay again to find the first component we can call it the adjacent component because that's the one that, um, that starts off where the other one starts okay that component is equal to and you'll notice that it's the adjacent side given the hypotenuse okay means that we are going to use cos so we have cos of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse I want the adjacent side so I close that one and I see I must take my hypotenuse times cos of theta so I take my hypotenuse which in this case is the vector times cos of theta next one is my opposite so you see I call it opposite because it's opposite the angle that I have and that vector the second component or the opposite component whatever you want to call it I'll need to take my vector this time I want the opposite side I have the hypotenuse so I'm going to need sine sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse and then I notice that there I get the vector I close that I must take my hypotenuse times sine so my hypotenuse is the vector times sine of theta and there we go now one very common application of this there's two very common applications is finding the vertical and the horizontal component so looking at any uh, vector again here I have a vector if I have to find the horizontal component that's the component that if I were to to go and drop down from that height straight down what would this length be okay that's the horizontal component the vertical component is talking about if I were to go horizontally directly to the side I'm not doing that very well but if I were to go directly to the side what will this height be what's the maximum height that it reaches okay now this height here is the same as this height here isn't it okay so there you notice there we have our right angled triangle again where we are trying to find this value right here the adjacent component so we'll need this angle that it makes with the horizontal okay and we need the opposite component so this if this is called vector f and I'm going to just call it any vector then this is going to going to be called um, the component in the x direction think for example of the Cartesian plane where this is x and that is y the component in the x direction and this one will be called the component in the y direction and following what we've said before we now see okay the component in the x direction will be the vector f times cos of theta because it's the adjacent side while the component in the y direction will be the vector f sine of 
sine theta. Okay, one more application, um, which you'll notice a little bit later, and maybe you won't get it just now, so, so don't freak out when I show it to you, is imagine when we have uh, something on a, an incline. So we have some sort of object, let's say, for example, a car is on this incline. Now, this car has weight going down and the surface is pressing against the car in that direction and then it, there's also friction okay the friction is in the opposite direction of its motion so if it is moving in that direction friction will be in that direction okay there's just some things acting on this car now what you'll notice here is that for this specific scenario we are going to want to know what is the component of the weight that is perpendicular to the surface in other words this component and the component of the weight that is parallel to the surface that component so we want to know this vector plus that vector and there you see once again that there is a 90 degree triangle so weight we are going to call W, okay, that's the weight of the car, and we'll use those two components. Don't worry just yet, I'm just uh, giving you an intro to this later on. You'll be given this angle, and I'm not going to show you now why it is so, but this angle and that angle will actually be the same. Okay, see if you can go and figure that out on your own, that would be a, a good um, try. So what you'll notice here is that if that's theta then this is opposite and that's adjacent and with that, that in mind we see that the weight parallel uh, perpendicular sorry to the surface that's the adjacent one that weight will be taking the hypotenuse which this time is this vector times cos theta and the one opposite that is now the one that is parallel to the surface you notice there's the parallel line so the weight parallel to the surface is equal to w sine of theta okay and with that in mind let's get to some practical examples 